Welcome back to Fish Gum. This is Tony Faggioni, and you're about to see, throughout the course of this video, me catching a historic catch. And we're going to talk about, throughout the video, how you can, too. My audio was shot on my chest cam. I couldn't pick up anything, so this video will necessitate commentary. I am fishing Fort Pickens area. If you look in front of me, you can see how shallow it is. These casts, in order to reach these fish, you've got to wait out at least a hundred yards and then cast about another 80 to a hundred yards. This is a sketchy day. You can see the storm clouds to my left and those will appear again at the wrong time but we do something amazing during the pour down of the storm first fish of the day a ballistic shark does not want to come in I believe it is a sandbar shark And he is done. He's off. And I can tell you that this place is loaded with big fish. The reason why this area is so special, another fish on, and I am not going to edit any of this footage. You're going to see entire catches from start to finish. The reason why that's important is because you won't really appreciate the fact how difficult this fight is unless you see me reeling this fish back 200 yards to the beach. This gets very difficult. We saw the shallow water before. The reason why I cast out another 80 to 100 yards is because we need to reach the 30 foot drop in water. The basin where these fish are located are 30 feet down. There's structure peppered throughout the entire Fort Pickens area. If you can find 30 feet of water and if you can cast from shore to 30 feet of water you will actually have a shot at catching this fish, other fish like grouper, shark, it's loaded. Now what makes this very difficult is the fight is also uphill. You can lose these fish and I'm actually caught on something. So I had to stop and pause and let the fish work its way out of structure it got hung up in something down there. There are wrecks, like I said, throughout this entire area. I worked him out by releasing the tension and letting him swim out. But if you horse these fish up the hill, I will actually lose one later by doing this, you will rip that hook right out of their mouth. So you have to reel these fish in in short bursts and let them fight when they can. And when they feel like they're giving you too much pressure, let them take it. Don't fight them. I have lost, in the process of learning how to fish this style from the beach, at least four or five big fish. And that's just the way you do it when you learn how to actually catch these fish. And there comes a point in time where these fish actually give up. And right now that fish is giving up. Once you get them off that 30 foot, their bladders fill up with air, and no longer is there any resistance. Yes, you heard me say it. Red snapper caught on cut bonita using a knocker rig with a Sputnik because the current in that 30 foot basin is tremendous. 
There it is. He measured 17 and a half total length. First keeper snapper of my snapper season. This hit cut Benita. We had to use a little bit of that thread around the Benita because it's really mushy, but we got ourselves one. Loving it. Another hit right here. Definitely hitting like a red snapper. Amazing to have another opportunity catching red snapper after I already caught one. Back to back, working them up that hill. And unfortunately, I lost this fish. Pulled the hook. Things indeed are about to get crazy. Fish on, middle rod. I'm not noticing it. I don't even know where I'm at. My back's turned. Another snapper is on. And if you look, you see that the storm is coming as well. Here's something that I experienced. Those are 14 foot six lure killer surf rods. I absolutely love them. I can sling anything further than I've ever done before using this rod. But what I've noticed during storms like this, when I make the cast, the rod charges. And what I mean by charges, I feel static energy popping my fingers as I'm casting this rod because of the storm is there around me. Very scary. I don't know if I'm about to get struck by lightning, but it happens every time there's a storm and I'm casting those out. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Again, no editing. All the way fight from shore, but it's going to get very interesting here. And for some reason, what you'll see is this storm, as it comes in, as it pours down, it turns the fish on. And look at that. That right there, Jason is coming to get. <laughs> and I'm absolutely shocked by what he reels in. It is such a tremendous catch. We have two fish on. Sam is ready with the net. And we got the storm coming down. And we've got doubles. Double red snapper. And Jason's is very, very special. Again, we are fighting two fish at the same time. No editing. We're just trying to get these fish in. There's mine. I'm not going to show you the fish. It's, it's, it was small. It went for 14 inches, and I get it, the measuring on it real quick and send it right back out. Uh, that was the second fish of the day for me, and it won't keep. But Jason, on the other hand, <laughs> he's having some fun. So Jason has kayaks that he has been kayaking his baits out uh, to the wreck. I'm basically casting as far as I can into the basin. There is this uh, wrong view that you have to be on a wreck in this area to catch these fish. Like I said before, if you can cast to 30 feet of water, you've got a shot at catching this fish. In the, the Pensacola area around Fort Pickens, you can find 30 feet of water pretty quickly anywhere on the bay side of the shoreline. You just got to get into it fish is just small and I'm gonna throw it back too tiny get him back in there his bat his bladder was not filled he was good to go swims off nicely and Jason is still on his fish such a fun time this is addicting by the way I love surf fishing I love fishing at the beach this is beach fishing and once you do this one time you'll want to go back. In fact, I'm going to try to go back even outside of snapper season because my friend caught a gag grouper in this exact location. So this is what you'll need in order to do what we're doing here, catching red snapper from the beach. Number one, you need at least a 12 to 13 foot fishing rod that you can sling bait with a four ounce Sputnik rigged knocker style which keeps the bait and the weight close together so it won't 
propel itself like a helicopter, there'll be a nice cast out there. And that rig should be at least 40 to 60 pound monofilament with about a 2 oc to 3 oc circle hook. The bait you need to use, if you have live bait, uh, live cigar minnows, pinfish, or hardtail, that would be awesome. You can also use dead baits. We use cut mullet, cut bonita, and cut whiting. You've got to find that 30 feet of water. You've got to wait out, and you've got to make that cast to that 30 feet of water. You've got to reel in and fight that fish slowly to pull it off the 30 foot drop. You will have success doing that. Again, we've caught a total of 18 this year during this season, and I will definitely be back there again. Now, let's get back to the regular audio and close out seeing this tremendous fish. Yeah, he's up here, Sam. Oh, he's big! Yes! He's a big one! Woo! Yes! Oh! Yes, he got some meat! Wow! Look at him! Yes, sir! He'll go for close to 20. Oh, Maybe 22. That's a big one. Woo! Beautiful fish. Nice! Fired up in this torrential rain. Activated nice. by the rain. <laughs> get that hook in. I'm going to get mine back out there. All right. Let's go measure him. Here's the fish we just caught. He'll go every bit of 20 inches or longer, maybe even 22. What a great fish that is for Jason. Caught on, by the way, the TFO. Awesome seeing Jason catch that big one. That's why his PB out here. Thank you so much for watching. Join me next time right here when we excite to strike. God bless.